Howdy folks, today I have even more chartreuse substitution options uh, for you to check out. I received some suggestions in the comments for other bottles that uh, might be good for this series, um, but one loyal viewer took it a step further, sent me two different bottles. Uh, so this video is gonna start off with an unboxing. So, a big thank you to Jim Dunlop who sent me Boomsma Kluster Bitter, uh, which should be exciting, and Chartreuse Vegetal, which is like, um, it's like a concentrated chartreuse, almost. Uh, more on that later. Now, I also bought a little bottle of Flora Green, which was uh, also suggested by a few different people in the comments. Now, by the way, sending me stuff, amazing. I can't believe people out there are so nice. If you're nice and you wanna send me something, put a, put a note down in the comments or just email me, Uncle Pete's Cocktail Shop at gmail.com or you can get at me on Instagram. However, I can send you my address and you can send me something if you want. You know, there's another option too, and that is there's a, a super thanks button down below. It's like a heart with a dollar sign or something. You can send me money directly through YouTube if you want to, but you don't have to. Now, in the spirit of this series, I enlisted the help of a friend, my sister-in-law, Pilar. Say hi, Pilar. Hi, Pilar. She was here for Thanksgiving just recently, and she loves chartreuse, so we did a little Thanksgiving Day chartreuse tasting. Now, we did it in the attic because it was a bit noisy down here. The sound in the attic is a little strange, but I'm just gonna cut back to that footage. Uh, in between explaining things, you'll get the idea. Now, first up is the bottle that Jim sent. Cloister better? I mean, do you speak Dutch? I mean, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Boomsma Kloosterbitter is Dutch. It's made by Boomsma, who also make Geneva. Apparently it is a 15th century recipe by a fellow named Brother Jacob. He apparently lived at a place called Clark Amster Cloister uh, and used 17 different herbs to make his uh, liqueur. It comes out at 40% alcohol. Let's see what we think. Okay, nice and green. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. It's definitely more herbal than chartreuse almost more like an amaro and it's like mintiness and it doesn't taste mm. much like chartreuse there's a bit of mm. sweetness to it but it's a little sweeter i think um it's mintier mm -hmm. maybe a little more licorice -y. it's good though 80 proof instead of 110 so one of the things about chartreuse is it's like so sort of overwhelming like it's got a ton of alcohol and a ton of sugar like it's this whole everything's amplified yeah and this is less amplified although it has a pretty similar profile i mean the color is great right but it's it's definitely not as complex as chartreuse yeah, chartreuse like... is just sharper it's like everything's a little more pointed yeah the higher alcohol like evaporates in your mouth and it's like all these flavors going on where this is definitely like sweeter yeah less intense yeah but sort of a little mintier a little the texture's different it's thicker yes um that's the other thing about 110 proof it's thinner like it's, right. it's more it's syrupy but thinner at the same time right somehow. yeah this is friendly i like it friendly it's friendly Friendly. Friendly. I like it too. Now the other bottle that Jim sent is called Vegetal. Uh, Vegetal de la Grande Chartreuse. It's basically a higher proof sort of concentrated chartreuse, almost like a, like a chartreuse bitters. They say to drink it by dropping a few drops onto a sugar cube, uh, dissolving that with cold water and drinking that. I haven't done that personally though. I do know someone who did. This is 69% and it comes in this insane little pine jug or whatever. Totes adorbs. Totes adorbs. Now this isn't really something you can just sip like a liqueur. It, it's got a little dropper top and we tried it on the back of our hands. It's very chartreuse-y. Um, but probably, I think what we're gonna do at the end is drop a little of this into each of our other substitutes and see if that improves their chartreuse makes them a better substitute. I've heard specifically that uh, the Genepi with some of this um, 
your vegetal in it is supposed to make a good substitute. So we'll we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, we've got this local stuff called Floral Green. It's made by a, a local company called A Company. Now the parent company of this company, A Company, is a company called Straightaway Cocktails. And they make pre-mixed, pre-bottled cocktails. But since they really couldn't sort of wholesale purchase you know, vast amounts of Campari or Aperol or Chartreuse, they've been sort of making their own sort of substitutes uh, to put into their cocktails. And then they decided that they could go ahead and sell those liqueurs on their own. Now they got one called Blue Doris. They've got one called Marigold Crimson Crisp. And I bought the Flora Green. They also make some vermouth and a coffee liqueur. It's a pretty decent line. They're actually pretty good, but they're not exactly analogous to other uh, liqueurs that they're maybe substituting for. So, but I decided to give this a try and just, just to see how it is. All right. Flora Green from Portland, Oregon. Cool. And not green. Not green at all. Not green. But this was suggested by some, a bunch of people in the comments. Well, this tastes nothing like chartreuse. It's sweet, almost a little tobacco-y. Definitely herbal, but different kind, more like piney. Mm, piney, definitely. Menthol. Yes. Eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not as minty or as uh, licorice as as the first one. Yeah. And definite and like more of that thinner texture of mm -hmm. chartreuse. It is also forty percent. Hmm. Um, but actually, not that. Not like chartreuse. Not that chartreusey. Yeah. I don't dislike it. <clears throat> I mean, it might mix up into a nice drink. They suggest making a bijou. I don't know. Mm. I'm glad I only bought a half tiny bottle. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some bottles that we've talked about before uh, in the previous episodes of this series, which you should, of course, go watch. We've got Faccia Bruto Centurbe and also Genepi de Chamois. Let's go see what Pilar thinks. We're moving on to Faccia Bruto. You speak Italian too, don't you? A little bit. <laughs> Faccia brutto. Much lighter green. Paler green, for sure. Doesn't smell like anything. This feels boozy. This almost doesn't feel like a herbal liqueur. This is more like a... It's almost fernet-like. It's strong. Not in its flavors, but strong. <laughs> you get a, a lot more of the alcohol flavor. Yeah. Uh, what's the proof on this one? I can't remember. This is 45, so it is higher proof than ones that we've tried so far. It's got that thinner texture like um, chartreuse does, but it doesn't have nearly the impact on your palate or on your or in your nose at all. It's not bad either, it tastes good. It's like the alcohol is so much more present. Yeah, I'm unsure how this would hold up in a cocktail in terms of like coming forward in the same way a chartreuse would. I'm not sure it would. Yeah, I'm not sure it would either. Moving on, Genepi. Uh, this one's famous. You've probably had Genepi before. Oh, yeah. I love Genepi. It is also 90 proof. Sort of a different category than chartreuse. Yeah, that's delightful. It's sweet. It's very different from chartreuse, definitely. But it's it's, 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 it's almost like it's almost like the Boomsma is more like trying to be more like Genepi than it is trying to be mm -hmm. chartreuse. Yes. Yeah, this feels like its own thing. It's mm -hmm. very nice. Yes, definitely thicker, sweeter, but yeah, a little bit of that mintier, um, licorice-ier sort of vibe, rather than the sort of alcohol vibe or like sugar vibe of yeah. these two. So, and the suggestion was that we put um, vegetal in with the genipi. Mm. I'll be curious because this kind of has its own character whether it really needs to be mixed, because I feel like this can be its own thing. It can. This is definitely its own thing. It's another thing we've determined in previous videos, is that it's sort of its own yeah. separate thing, which I think I'm kind of starting to think this Boomsma is as well. But to make a substitute, if you can't get the green chartreuse, would this make a good substitute with a little of the vegetal in it? Now, next up, finally, is Ver. I also covered this in the last two episodes of the series, and I had almost finished that bottle when uh, I had made that series. Uh, and then the folks who make Ver is a place called Elixir. They're in Eugene, Oregon. They saw the video and offered to buy me a brand new bottle of Ver because mine was almost empty. How cool is that? That's 
two, that's three free bottles just in this video. Amazing. So let's see how Ver stacks up. All right, Ver, go. There. It is green. It is pretty green. 50% uh, alcohol, so we're going... I didn't intend to, but we're sort of going up the alcohol scale as we All go. All right. Mm, also, doesn't that smell much like chartreuse or much like anything? That's really nice. I think, it's kind of, I think it is a bit chartreuse-y. Not a texture, like kind of like the way it opens up. I think the higher proof makes it more chartreuse-y in how like you get that sort of all those herbal vapors coming in, into your mouth or whatever. I mean... I mean, that is intense, I guess, on the... Isn't, yeah, it is definitely more intense, but... I agree that this is pretty similar, but I do think it has its own character. It's, it's sharper, it's... It is. It, it feels a little more boozy than, than chartreuse. It doesn't have quite as much of the sweetness, I think. I feel like it might have less sugar. Yeah. <clears throat> That's one of those sort of magical things about chartreuse, is it's obviously got a ton of sugar in it. But you don't really taste the sugar. It's like part of the proof and the sugar sort of balance each other out. And these are balancing out in like a similar but different way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think in the pinch, this stuff is a pretty good substitute. In terms of like being high proof herbal, like you put it in a drink and it's like you're getting the vibes, you know. Yeah. And it punches through a drink in a similar way. So because it's not so, so much sweeter, like you don't have to necessarily adjust the sweetness of your cocktail. Yeah, see this do well in a drink, for sure. I'm not sure I would want to sip this as much as even some of the other ones. Excellent point. How often do you sip chartreuse? I mean, I love sipping chartreuse. <laughs> <laughs> so like, the, like these two, I feel like, sippable by themselves because they're sweet enough and the texture is nice. Maybe we don't sip these necessarily on their own, because especially this one with the alcohol sort of burn is much higher. This one, I don't know, this is supposed to be in cocktails and isn't all that chartreuse-y. Yeah. All right. Agreed. Now, circling back to the vegetal, we put a few drops of vegetal into each glass that we had already tasted and went through and gave them all a quick taste just to see uh, how much the vegetal improved things in terms of being more like chartreuse. I think this pretty I, close. I think it's I think it improved the aroma, like it made it more chartreuse on the nose, but not necessarily the flavor. Like it isn't gonna not be sweet because we put this stuff in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Very piney, very eucalyptus y, not super chartreuse y. Doesn't have nearly the mint and stuff. A couple drops of Bitch Tall didn't do a ton for it. I don't think it did it any favor in yeah. terms of like okay. making it more chartreuse-like or improving anything. Because that one's out. Mm -hmm. I feel like that a little bitter, more bitter. Mm. Yeah, more bitter. Dry, bitter. I feel like that made it a little bit more chartreuse-y. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad. I agree. Not yeah. bad. Not bad. Interesting. Different texture still, but... Yeah, definitely. All right, Janipi, now this is the one that I got specifically told would be a good addition. Though they might have thought more in a cocktail than anything. Because I think like dashing that into a cocktail might just might just be a fun thing to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that made it a lot more chartreuse-y, actually. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised, mm -hmm. too. I feel like it cut the sweetness a little bit. Mm -hmm. And added some extra, I don't know, some extra zing to it. Which I wasn't expecting just a few drops of this to make that big of a difference, but... Yeah, very interesting. I didn't expect that either because this had its own character. It seemed like its own thing, but it seems to absorb the chartreuse of this much better than anything else we've tried so far. Agree, 100%. Interesting. interesting. I think that is a pretty good... That is so far a pretty good substitute, so... Yeah. I don't know. Let's, let's try this last one and then right. we'll um, make, have some conclusions. Hmm. I don't know if that was a huge difference either. Yeah, I think this one's kind of almost too thin in a way to mm -hmm. like really open up with the extra chartreuse. It's still really boost forward and... I agree. I feel like the thing about Genepi is that it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit sweeter and it's taking on these this vegetal and that's doing something good. It's giving it what this needs, whereas this already is kind of boozy and sharp. And so adding more from the vegetal didn't really make it more chartreuse -y, whereas this one, 
the Genipi needed a little bit of that extra zing because of the extra sweetness that's in it. Whereas the Boomsma was a little too sweet, like too far in the other direction, so maybe if we added a lot more to this it might have the same effect, but what are your conclusions? This stuff is amazing. I, I could see myself putting this in a cocktail that isn't even like a chartreuse focused cocktail. Like, right. I agree. I mean, you could put this in a moral latte or something. That would be dope. You could spice up a lot of things with this, I think. Yes. Like, um, I'm thinking like a, a, a gin old fashioned or something, or some stirred gin drink, just a couple dashes of this, and just herb the whole thing up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Super cool. This stuff and the Genopee, like, are amazing, like, just on their own. Yes. Like, really, really good. I don't think anything is really quite like chartreuse. I think probably in a cocktail, I would say this one, I would probably use as a substitute for chartreuse. Yeah, Because it comes pretty close. Um, I agree. I think that the Europeans uh, know what they're doing in terms of herbal liqueurs, having done it for hundreds of years. But these two are trying, but they're not quite hitting the mark in terms of substituting for a chartreuse and being drinkable on their own. One of my theories is that new producers, people who are producing new things, are like, cocktails are so popular, let's make this thing that will work well in a cocktail. Whereas, you know, these guys were like, we've been making this for 100 years because, not for cocktails, but because just to drink by themselves. So these are designed to sort of be drunk on their own. Whereas these are more designed to be like, hit in a cocktail. So they don't taste as good on their own. That's my theory, I'm sticking with it. I like it. Yeah. So we're thinking in a cocktail, maybe this one is 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 the winner, but the Boomsma and the Genopee, delicious on their own. Flora Green, not, tastes pretty good, but not that chartreuse -y. And Faccia Bruto, very boozy, like very, a lot of alcohol. Although in previous videos, we found that it worked okay in like a last word. All right, back to you, Pete. Okay. Big thanks to Pilar for recording with me. That was super fun. Giant thanks to Jim Dunlop for sending me those bottles. I, I so appreciate it. And a huge thanks to Elixir and Eugene for sending me a bottle of Vare. I'm giving so much thanks. It's like it's Thanksgiving. Now, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.